All right guys, it's Sam over at Droners, and today we're at the beautiful Biltmore Hotel down in Miami, Florida. And we're gonna be showing you guys how to actually use the MicaSense Altum series on a Matrice 200 to collect and gather data on the crops that we have here. Right now it's a golf course, but what we're gonna do is take samples and be able to upload it into our program and show you where the actual health is and where the distress is on the crop. So here we actually have the MicaSense Altum itself. We have it with the DJI Skyport, so everything is fully integrated into the system. And on this system here, it's actually three different systems running at the same time. So you have an RGB camera, you have a multi-spectral camera, and on the Altum, you have a thermal camera that's running. Now it's a FLIR Lipton sensor that's running on here that's gonna actually give you thermal readouts and feedback as well. And for the Skyport system, it literally just clips in and locks in place. And that's it, that click is the locking in place. Then you just have to connect the DLS sensor. Once you have the sensor plugged in here, it's gonna be running off the DLS2 sensor here. This sensor is actually what's collecting all the information. It's collecting sunlight. It's being able to actually feed the GPS and the data to be able to actually stamp it onto uh, all the data that we're collecting on here. All right guys, so what we're doing now is we're actually gonna calibrate the camera system itself. Now, the important thing to keep in mind here is that the sensor itself has to be facing the back of the sun. This has to be on the ground and you're gonna be taking a picture from one meter up. There's two different ways that you can do that. And you wanna obviously make sure your shadow's not interfering at all here. You can either take the picture from a button right here, or you can do it through the application itself. We're gonna be doing it through the app. All right guys, so once you have everything ready to go here, we're gonna go into our Pix4D app. Now I already have everything pre-routed and pre-mapped. What we're gonna be doing is flying at 60 meters on here because that's where we have our limitations here within the FAA site that we're flying. And here you're actually gonna see that we have about a 10 minute flight on here. And then this is our actual payload system setup. So we're flying on the Matrice 200 series. We have an 83% overlap. You wanna have at least a minimum of 80% overlap on here to be able to get a really good readout on the system that we're actually gonna be looking at. Now with everything ready here to fly, we've already gone ahead and drawn out our grid of what we're gonna be mapping. We're just gonna go ahead and click start mission and the drone will take off and do the course. All right guys, so we flew the route with our Matrice 200 here. We're gonna go back to the office. We're gonna check out what data we collected with the Altum. And I'm gonna go ahead and go in depth and show you on all the different values that you can actually get from the MicaSense Altum camera and be able to actually see the crop health and even the count if we have any out here. We just got back from the Biltmore Hotel. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the data that we've collected. The easiest thing to do is take all the pictures and videos that you have, put them onto a thumb drive and then upload it onto your computer. For this, we're gonna be using Pix4D Fields. I already have it open right here in the background. And it's very simple to actually process everything that you've gotten here. Just make sure that you actually review the files that you're looking at, select all the pictures that you're gonna be using, and then upload them into the system itself. All right, so once you have Pix4D Fields open, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go click on New Project. Now, from there, you have two different options. You can actually start a brand new project itself, or you can import the images. I do recommend importing the images if you've already done the project itself. Simply click on import images, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna import either the image or the GeoTIFF file. When collecting raw data itself, you're gonna actually put the images themselves directly from the Altum sensor. If you look at the screen, this is the actual Biltmore Hotel itself. This is the golf course that we surveyed while we were there. So this is the actual 3D render of everything that we checked out while we were there. Now, to be able to save on time, I actually went ahead and uploaded the images here and we've already created our model. As far as it goes when it comes to actually uploading onto here, it is gonna take a little bit of time to upload all the images into your computer system, but once Pix4D Fields has them on here, it's usually about 10 to 15 minutes to upload the entire image for you. So here you can see all the different layers that we have. You know, This is our surface model, this is everything that we actually flew and what we covered. These are the different areas that we inspected. And over here on the left hand side, you can actually select everything that you want to be able to see the readouts on. Um, and you can actually go ahead and modify this as much as you want up on the top right hand side. And then once you've selected up on the top right hand side, you can easily just pick out what you want to see. And for our use today, we're going to be looking at NDVI, NDRE, and because we use the Altum, we're going to also be looking at the thermal as well. Simply select all three, click generate, and it literally takes Pix4D maybe five minutes to, to generate everything here. So we're looking at the NDRE right here, and what that's doing is it's showing the red edge band, and it shows a measurement that's not as strongly absorbed by the topmost layers of the leaves. 
Now, NDRE can also give us a better insight into permanent or later stage crops because it's able to measure further down into the canopy. Now, here we're actually able to see pretty much the grass in the area that we have, and you're able to actually see a lot of where the heat sources are coming from and just how much health is actually in there on the crops themselves. And as you can see here, we have a lot more red on the screen. This is pretty much showing you how much of the chlorophyll is being absorbed by, how much light is being absorbed by the plant um, producing chlorophyll. And here you can actually see there's a lot of red. Now, the green areas are actually the higher grassy areas that we have. Again, keep in mind, this is a golf course. So a lot of the red that you're seeing there, we have patches of water coming through here with a canal. We have some sand pits and some sand traps along the different way. And then obviously the roadway markers that we took with our golf cart. But the actual green you see itself is the actual grass that's a little bit taller um, than the rest of the fields are. So actually for what we're seeing here, the grass is fairly healthy. It's in actually in really great condition. It's just that the areas where people are actually playing golf, it's so thin and so small. Obviously they could be able to go ahead and maintain that grass a little bit better, be able to put down a little bit more, but it's also very heavily used as well. And then the final readout that we're gonna be looking at is thermal. Now, when you're looking at the thermal aspect, what we're trying to find is the actual heat and where more water might need to be applied. Um, and actual overall general health and just seeing areas where the grass might be getting trampled a lot more, areas that are more prone to overheat exposure. And what we're seeing again is the purple area, it's pretty decent, it's not really bad. That's the normal area of grass that we're seeing, as well as the sand dunes. Um, obviously the hottest spots you're seeing right now are the road. You know, that's just the concrete itself absorbing a lot of the heat. And then we also just see, again, where the grass is very, very low cut, where everyone's actually playing golf itself. It's absorbing tons of heat in those areas. So these are just high maintenance areas that the hotel itself has to keep in mind and actually has to take into account when they're actually gonna go and fertilize and water and be able to actually maintain the grass that's here, look at these readouts and be able to assess just how much product we need to use out here and how often we actually have to be sampling the soil, sampling the grass and looking at the data as well. All right guys, so just to kind of wrap it up here, you know, keep in mind this is something that you wanna be filming about midday, noon, give or take two hours, obviously plus two hours past noon or before two hours past noon. You want it really when the sun is at the middle point in the sky. Another thing that you wanna be able to do is when you're taking all these different indexes, this is just information and data that you're collecting. It's something that you wanna be able to take and make an action plan on how you're actually gonna maintain your fields, maintain your crop health, be able to assess how much fertilizer do I really need, how much water are my crops actually getting, um, and be able to see the overall general health that you're getting here. Um, that's something that the MicaSense series cameras are able to do for you. And it's something that even with the addition of thermal on the Altum, it's just giving you that extra layer, that extra spectrum that you're able to look into and see where the real plant damage is happening. Keep in mind, you know, this is something that only took us about two hours, you know, driving down to the hotel, collecting the data, putting the drone in the air, calibrating the camera system. These are all really quick. You know, the drone flight itself, it'll actually estimate it out for you. This was a 10 minute drone flight. We covered more or less about an acre on here actually taking all the images, putting it into PIX4D, uploading the entire system, and getting this actual readout, again, took less than an hour, um, and actually processing and getting all these different things that we talked about here, all these different bands that you're able to see, only took about 10 minutes. And as you can see, it changes rather rapidly, and it gives you a much better readout. So with that, guys, if you have any questions or any concerns at all, please don't hesitate to give us a call here. Again, my name is Sam from Drone Arts. Thank you.